Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of Afro Plus Law modding tutorials and in this one I'm going to show you how to use the item pool class. Of course with new changes to the game with the booster pack and things like that we also get some changes to the API and in this particular case we got a new class to work with called item pools and what this pool or not pool but this class allows us to do is essentially to manipulate the item pools just a little bit easier and, and just gives us more finesse and control over it. It also has some other nifty functionalities which I'm going to touch as we actually go through the video but you can imagine that previously you had to have a large array of all the IDs in a list and that didn't really work well. So without further ado, let's just get started, I'm gonna tell you what's new and what you can do with this. So first of all, if you look at the callbacks like we usually do, it's, you can see that I have two callbacks and one of them is just a post render callback, well both are post render, but the first one is post render for the reasons because I'm detecting if a button is triggered and then when I press a button C or the button B, something particular happens and I'm gonna explain what in a second. And of course the other callback is just the debug text callback which is just there to show us what's going on on the screen in some text form. So the first thing, the first function here is give item and when I press the button C and of course when the input detects that this button is triggered then I just give myself a random item and a random card and a random pill with the new functions from the item pools class. And maybe the easier one is the B button which blacklists items and in this particular case it just uses one of the new functions called add room blacklist. And what this particular function does is actually removes that particular item from existing in that room. I'm not sure if this applies to the room or maybe to the whole item pool that you're blacklist the item from but for my testing what I did is I went into the secret room I blacklisted three of the secret room items I believe it's the blank card the quarter and something else I can't remember it's not really important but I blacklist three items and when I try to spawn them in with my first function they actually didn't want to come in so I assume this works for the room or maybe the whole item pool but essentially if you don't want certain items to spawn at all then you would use these three functions or for example if you wanted to spawn items from a select item pool you can blacklist them and then just spawn the rest that's that's maybe a bit of a convoluted way of going about it but at least it's a possibility and of course if you don't if you want to remove this blacklist there's also a function which which does exactly that and it's just called reset room blacklist. So if you have any items blacklisted or maybe another mod blacklist them, you can just remove them from the blacklist and they'll be allowed to spawn again. So now that we got through this, let's main let's focus on the main core so to say. So the function give item. And in this particular case, when I press the button C, then this function triggers. First of all, I just get some of the player, I get player, I get the new item pools class, which you can get by game get item pool, then I get the room, I get the seeds, and then I get a next seed. And in this particular case, this is not the best way of going about this, I just have it for demonstrational purposes, but what you would really want to do is initiate uh, a new RNG class with the starting seed of the run, and then when you generate a new seed, and every time you do generate a new seed, it will be the same for whoever actually is playing this particular run. So for example, let's say if you and me are playing the run and you create a new RNG class with the same starting seed and then you just ask the RNG class for the next random number, it's gonna give us the same number and this is just gonna make sure that any mod that you actually work with is gonna have the same result regardless of different people playing it. But in this particular case, because I'm just trying to demonstrate that this is not indeed random and truly random, I'm just using some random function called get next seed and this is just gonna give us one random number. In this particular case what I do is, first of all, I get the current room type and I just get that by saying room get type and this is gonna change depending if it's a secret room, depending if it's a normal room or maybe even a treasure room or whatever essentially this is the room type that the item pool is then dependent on and then I just say item pool get pool for this particular room and then it just gives us the item pool type and again this is a new enumeration which is just tied to the item pool that you're currently in. So if you're a treasure room, then the item pool type that you're gonna get is the treasure room item pool type. And then of course the second one is seed which is just something I've talked about right now. And the next one I get is I just say item pool get collectible, get the item pool type as its parameter. So if we're in a treasure room, we, this, this item pool type will be a treasure room item pool type. And then we will generate a random number or an, a random item ID from that particular item room. And then that is going to be saved in the item ID. And the second one here is a boolean value which determines whatever that item is removed from the item pool of, or not. You have control over this. So for example if you want to spawn an item then you would usually set this to true because you don't want it to spawn again but for example if you just wanted to give the player an item in some kind of a challenge fashion then you can set this to false and that item won't be removed from that item pool and will be able to get spawned again. And of course just to show that this item is actually from that particular item room I just use the Isaac spawn function to spawn the pickup and the pickup variant, the collectible in the spot of the Isaac. 
And of course, I also take advantage of some of the new functions, which are the get card and the get pill. And this is basically works just the same, but instead of getting an item, you just get a random card and then you get a random pill. And I've explained some of the new callbacks regarding the cards in my previous video. And if you want to check that out, this is kind of going to be related. But in this particular case, if you don't want to see it, Again, we just input the seed and then we have three boolean parameters. The first one, can it be a card? The second one, can it be a rune? And the third one is it, can this pool only contain runes? And in this particular case, because I set true to both of the first ones, it's just gonna get, generate a random card or a rune and just set this ID to whatever that generated rune or card ID was. And the second one, I'm just gonna generate a random pill and just maybe as an extra little bonus, I'm gonna identify it as well so we can actually see what this pill is before we take it. And once we're done with that, uh, then I just spawn them diagonal to the player just so we can see what's going on. And that's basically it. It allows us for a much neater control of the item pools and of course also the pills and cards and things like that. And there's some other functions which I'm going to explain maybe a bit later, but for the now being this is actually all that's relatively important. So without further ado, let's jump into the game and we can see how this actually works. Welcome to the game. So in this particular case you can see that I've started up the mod. I've gave myself Pyro just to find the secret room but it's not gonna be really important for this matter. But you can see that the text on the screen is high which means that the mod has been initiated. And now what I can do is if I enter the treasure room and I just press the button C, you can see that it spawns a random item from the treasure room. And in this case of course the pinging shares can appear in the treasure room so this seems to be working fine. If I pick up the pill you can see that it's already identified so I can use it to get a luck upgrade and of course a random card like I've said in the mod. And of course if I just go back to the normal room which is not of any item pool and just generate our item here it can generate an item from any particular pool or at least we can call it the now pool if it makes you feel a little bit better. And of course we, with that every time I spawn an item I also get some pills and some cards and tarot cards and things like that and you can see that this actually works and it's a very nice and compact method of spawning different items from their respective item pools and it just makes working with this a little bit easier. So we're at the end of this video as well. I did say that I'm gonna show you what the item pool, the, the class reference is, and that's something that I should do maybe a bit more often. But in this particular case, I just felt like I showcased everything that's important. So there's really no need for me to go over the same functions over again. So I just decided to skip that altogether. But you can see that this is actually a very useful tool in us and aiding with just spawning new items which correspond to the item pool of that particular room that you're currently in. And that's something that was kind of difficult before, but as you can see, it actually takes only like three lines of code in order to achieve now and of course once you have that item ID spawned in and generated then you can do basically anything that you want with it and maybe what's even better it allows us or maybe it makes it a bit easier uh, for us to control the seed outcome so if you want your mod to work the same for different players on the same seed then you can do that much easier than anything that was previously possible before so it's just a really neat way and I hope that this API keeps improving because these changes actually do make life for a lot of modders much easier not only easier because when you see that something is so much easier to make you get immediately more excited I just jump right on top of it even though I, I did get kind of out of modding a bit just because I, I see this new one new class that I can play with uh, it just gets me some more inspiration and you can see that hopefully this will allow you to to do your own mods or maybe if you had an idea and you weren't sure how to implement it before this is just going to be able to make this life a little bit easier i hope you enjoyed this one guys and i hope to see you next time